Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Map Tube. It's me, Deepak George, and in this lesson, we start to learn about asymptotes, and we'll do it in less than 20 minutes. So, have you ever heard of the word asymptotes? Asymptotes means they are lines. What are asymptotes? Asymptotes are lines. And if you ask me what is special about a line, it has so many special things. That is what we are going to learn. Okay. So, by definition, asymptote is a tangent at infinity. Asymptote is a tangent at infinity. What is an asymptote? It is a line. And it will have a relation with a curve. So, suppose a curve comes nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer to a line. But if the curve is not able to meet that line and they both move forever and forever and ever and the distance between the curve and the line becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, then we call the line as an asymptote. Then remember that line will be called an asymptote. So, I'll show you a graph. So, look at this. This is the graph of 2 to the power x. And when you look at this, if you look at the negative side, you feel as if the graph has touched the line called x-axis. No. But can you see the distance between that graph and that x-axis is becoming smaller. I'll magnify and magnify. You might feel that they are touching, but no. They cannot touch. Can you see? There is still a little bit gap. Now, I'll keep on moving, keep on moving, keep on moving. Now, you might feel they are touching. No, I'll magnify. No. So, an asymptote is a line which meets the curve at infinity. But if someone tells you, okay, I'll meet you at infinity, then don't believe that person because that person is never going to meet you. So, asymptote is a line which will never ever meet the curve, but the distance between the curve and the line will be so small, we might feel that they are already touching. See, there are three types of asymptotes. How many types? Three types. One is the asymptotes parallel to the x-axis and they are called horizontal asymptote. And the second one, can you look at the graph of tan x? I'll plot the graph and show you. I'll type x is equal to pi by 2. So now look. Can you see this line and the curve? I'll magnify this portion. The distance between them becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And the line and the graph moves together, together, together. But they are never ever going to meet. And this is called a vertical asymptote. What do you call this uh, asymptote? Vertical one. And there is another one. They are called slammed asymptotes. If you look at the most of the books, they use the word slammed asymptotes. But in your books, I saw the word oblique asymptote. Both are correct. Anyway, how many types of asymptotes are there? Horizontal and vertical and slammed asymptotes. And you have to call them oblique asymptotes. That means asymptotes which are not parallel to the x-axis or the y-axis. Okay. Anyway, in my videos, in my notes, I always use the letters HA, the abbreviations HABAOA. But in examination, don't write such abbreviations. Always go for the full word so that everyone will understand clearly. Okay, now let's go for type 1. Look at this. In your syllabus, there are three types. One is rational function. If you look at any book, you'll see that first they will teach you rational functions. Then they will teach you algebraic functions or implicit function. And the third one will be polar functions. So, you'd expect three types. Type 1, rational. Type 2 uh, is algebraic. And type 3 is polar. But when you look at the previous syllabus and if you look at the way they ask question, you'll see that every time they ask a question from algebraic, that means the implicit function. Now, your syllabus has changed. Now, they will ask two mark question as well as four mark question. 
Now this rational functions are going to be more important because they may ask a two mark question from rational function. Okay. Anyway, rational function means you have you will have polynomial by polynomial. They won't put trigonometry or anything. We will have polynomial divided by polynomial and they are called rational function. And you have to understand one thing. Asymptotes occur because functions become infinity. Actually, vertical asymptotes occur because functions become infinity. I will give you one example. I will type a rational function. I uh, will just make a function x plus 1 divided by um, x minus 1. Uh, or let's make it more interesting. Let's make it like x square minus 3x plus 2. Okay, now look at this. So, I created a function and I am 100% aware this will have two vertical asymptotes. And I am going to draw that. I just created a function and I know that it will have two vertical asymptotes. Because I can see that the denominator will become 0 when x equal to 1. Look at the denominator. I am going to type that line x equal to 1. Can you see? And I will show you that is an asymptote. Now, I know there is one more asymptote, x is equal to 2. Do you know how I got the asymptote? Very simple. I know at x equal to 1, the function will become infinity. And I know at x equal to 2, the function will become infinity. So, obviously, nearby 1, the function will become infinity or the function will be going towards infinity. It will become bigger and bigger and bigger. So, I was confident the values that make the denominator 0 will become the vertical asymptote. And that's the method. That's the method. So the method goes like this. You equate the denominator to 0 and solve. And if you get some finite values, just like I got 1 and 2, I know the roots of that equation that I showed you are 1 and 2. Then x equal to 1 and x equal to 2 are the vertical asymptotes. But at the same time, if you get the denominator, uh, if you equate the denominator to 0 and if you get imaginary values, there will be no vertical asymptote. Okay. Now, the second one. Horizontal asymptote is easy to do. So, what we do is we are going to observe the graph. Look at this. I have a graph. And I am observing the graph and I see that the graph is kind of like becoming a constant. Now I realize that the graph is actually nearing a line. Can you see? The line is able to move very near to the graph, but they are not touching each other. That means I am going to observe the graph far, far, far away from the origin. And that means I am going to find the limit. Mathematically, we call it like this. Find the limit x tends to infinity f of x. That means observe the graph of f of x far from the origin. Now there are two possibilities. If the value becomes a constant, it means it is nearing some line. The graph is coming nearer and nearer and nearer to some line. But if it shoots to infinity, then it means the graph goes like this. So it won't become an asymptote. So let me make the method very clear for you. If you want vertical asymptote, if you want the vertical asymptote, all you have to do is you choose the denominator of the rational function. By the way, we are talking about type 1. Type 1 means rational function, polynomial divided by polynomial. So for vertical asymptotes, the method is very easy. Equate the denominator to 0. Use a calculator and find the values that will make them 0. And just write, therefore, limit extends to uh, what you call alpha, the function value will be infinity. If it is infinite, then it means this will be a vertical asymptote. Now for horizontal asymptote, the method goes like this. You find limit x tends to infinity. That means we observe the function far away from the 
origin. Now, look at this. Let's work out one problem. Then you'll understand easily. So we have a rational function. What do we have? We have a rational function. And I'm going to inspect for the vertical asymptote. So what will I do? I will equate the denominator to zero. And I solved it using a calculator x equal to 1, x equal to 2. Now, I am sure that when x values are very near to 1, that is why I am writing the limit, the given function, the given function means this rational function will become infinite. And that means x equal to 1 is a vertical asymptote. Similarly, x equal to 2 is another vertical asymptote. So, what did I understand? Our given function has two vertical asymptotes. One is the line x equal to 1 and another is the line x equal to 2. Now, look at the second part. It's like so easy. I told you. They might ask you for two marks. That's it. For the second part, what we do is we find limit x tends to infinity f of x. What do you mean by that? We are observing the graph far, 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 far away from the origin. And I'm checking whether the graph is coming near some constant value. And by the way, you learned how to evaluate this limit using L'Hopital. If you want, you can use that. If you don't want, I have one simple method that you learned in class 11. When you have polynomial by polynomial, you scan the numerator and denominator and divide by the highest power. So divide by x squared, divide by x squared, divide by x squared, divide by x squared. And 1 by infinity is 0, 0, 0. I got the answer 0, a finite number. Now look, I am able to understand when we are far, 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 far away from the origin, my graph is coming near, 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 near 0. Or the graph can be like this also. Or the graph can be like this also. Anyway, I understand the graph is coming very nearer to 0. So, I am so confident our asymptote is y equal to 0. At the same time, if you get infinity or minus infinity, we say no horizontal asymptote. Let's, let's check one more problem so that you understand very clearly. Uh, look at this. <clears throat> uh, what is the first thing to do? Equate the denominator to 0. Or check when the function will become infinite. The function will become infinity when the denominator is 0. And that means nearby 0, the graph will be along with the y-axis. So, x equal to 0 is a vertical asymptote. Now tell me, how do you work out horizontal asymptote? Very simple. You find limit x tends to infinity f of x. You can use L'Hopital's rule or the method that you learned long back. Anyway, uh, like what you call, you divide throughout by the highest power and check whether you are getting finite number or infinite number. Infinite. So, no horizontal asymptote. Now, let me conclude by telling you one more thing. Slant asymptote. Slant asymptotes will happen when the degree of numerator will be 1 more than the denominator. The reason is, I kept a very simple problem so that you can understand. Can you see? I am using division method here. But if it is a complex problem, use the long division method you learned long back. Anyway, x square divided by x. 2x divided by x minus 1 divided by x and look at this this part looks like a linear can you see so i can understand when we are at far 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 away from the origin this part will disappear because when x tends to infinity this will become approximately zero and our curve will be approximately be the line x plus 2 that means our curve will be nearer and nearer and nearer to the line x plus 2 so that's it. That will give you an oblique asymptote. So uh, work out more problems. I'll be back with more problems on rational function. And we'll start with the next technique that is called asymptotes for the implicit function. And that's more important because that will be giving you a four marks. You can support us by sharing our channel in your social media. And you can support by joining our Viber group. 
Anyway, I'll be back with another video very soon. So till then, my friends, bye.